Hey, good morning, folks. It's Pastor George just greeting you this Tuesday, um, April 14th, 2020. Um, beautiful day right now, uh, sun shining, and so we're kind of enjoying that. Uh, but I, I hope wherever you are that you are in, able to get outside and enjoy some nice weather today. Um, you know, right now during this uh, pandemic, I think all of us are becoming very, very proficient in our hand washing routines, aren't we? We wash our hands constantly and probably a lot more than, than we ever did before, and uh, which is a good thing, you know. But in I was reading in my... Uh, Bible this morning, and I came across an interesting passage, and it's in Mark chapter 7, and this involves a group of individuals known as the Pharisees, and if you read the Bible, we often view them as the bad guys, because they are the ones that really pushed to have Jesus crucified. They rejected him, because he did not live up to their expectation uh, of what the Messiah, the King of the Jews, should be, or... Um, and, and also, he, he convicted them all often of their outward uh, focus on religious, on their religious practices, and yet their neglect to their inward heart condition. And um, in this case, uh, um, it almost seems like the Pharisees are in the right here. It says in, in Mark chapter 7, And now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, these guys, it seems like they're coming in out of, out of where we're just sitting down, grabbing food, dirty hands, and, and obviously they wouldn't make it well today in, in what we're going through. It says, For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Now, obviously a legitimate question in our context, in what we are going through, is why are they coming in without first washing their hands, uh, observing this cleanliness. But the issue here was not a matter of, of personal hygiene or that they were uh, not washing their hands. It was a matter that they were not observing a tradition. You see, the Pharisees believed that they could be right with God simply by observing these external, uh, outward um, rituals. Um, and, and they wash their hands, not as a matter of, of personal hygiene or cleanliness, uh, but as a matter of a, a religious tradition um, that, that they believed they were making themselves right with God. And the problem is they would often walk around and observe these traditions, these man-made traditions that, that extended the intent of the Old Testament law to the point that uh, they, they were very arrogant, they were very proud. And Jesus brings this out. He says, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their, their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You see, they had not just been observing the, the law handed down by Moses, but they were um, observing... They had written up traditions um, uh, and, and doc, dog, dogmas and doctrines of their own to interpret these even further to the point that they were no longer even observing the law. Jumping down to, to Mark 7 and verse 14, he says, And he called the people to him again and said, Hear me, all you people, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. Now, Jesus is not addressing personal hygiene. He's not addressing our behavior during a pandemic. What he is uh, addressing is this idea that um, 
traditions and, and what we eat, what we drink, all of these things are what make us right before God or not right before God. Um, and and he, he's, he's making a very point that that's not the issue. What's The issue is what's going on in the heart. His disciples um, asked him about this, and he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Then he declared, All foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. From what, from what for from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, slander pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. So understand this. Jesus is not addressing hand washing at this point. He's addressing this idea that we can somehow live uh, righteously before God simply by our external behaviors and yet ignore the more important things in what comes out of our hearts. There's another scripture I just want to briefly read this morning. It's in Psalm 51. Psalm 51 was written by David. Remember the young man that killed the giant? He later became king. And, and David is called a man after God's own heart, except in the middle of his life, he committed some atrocious sins. He committed adultery. He, had, he um, orchestrated the murder of the woman's husband by sending him to the front line of battle. And then he married her, had a, a baby out of wedlock, or he had this baby out of this adulterous relationship. And he tried to cover it all up. And then he was exposed by the prophet Nathan. And in his exposure, instead of trying to defend himself and trying to cover it, he, he came to repentance. And he came before God and he realized that my heart condition is wrong. And, he, and in 50, Psalm 51, he writes this beautiful prayer. And I think all of us have been to that point where we realize we are wrong uh, and we need God's mercy. He says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly for, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, that your words may be justified, that, that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. And jumping down, he says uh, in verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. I think it is appropriate during this time. We continue our hand washing. Um, God is pleased with that. But even more so that we would take time to examine our own hearts, our own minds, our own spirits. God doesn't bring these to light to condemn us, and he doesn't bring them so that we can straighten ourselves up. He brings them to us so that we can come to him and call out to him for his mercy and his grace and the power of his spirit to cleanse us on the inside. Father, today we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the... Um, cleansing power of, of Jesus' blood. We thank you for the grace that he gives us. We thank you that your spirit, but it only comes as we humbly come before you in repentance. Father, wash us and cleanse us inside and out that we might truly glorify you in all that we do. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you folks. You have a wonderful day. We will connect with you later and um, we are praying for you. Continue to just uphold you. You're in our thoughts daily and uh, we can't look forward. We look forward to the day when we can get back together uh, in person. Blessings.